joints or articulations are just where two bones meet in the body. It's the way the various bones of the skeleton are connected together. There are two ways to classify joints. One is structural and the other is by the amount of movement that is observed at the joint. So let's take a look at um, the structural classification first. There are three different uh, structural classifications. One is a fibrous joint and a fibrous joint is just where the two bones that are articulating are uh, the gap in between those bones are filled with fibrous connective tissue. One example of a fibrous joint is a suture and a suture is the articulation found between skull bones and so where the skull bones grow together and fuse there's actually tiny little uh, fibers that fill that gap and that's known as a suture. Another type of fibrous joint is a syndesmosis and that's where two bones are united by ligament. And the third type of fibrous joint is a gomphosis. And a gomphosis is specifically the way a tooth is anchored in the socket by short little uh, fibers known as the periodontal ligament. A second category of joints are cartilaginous joints. And with cartilaginous joints, uh, it's cartilage that joins the two bones. And so in this example, uh, synchondrosis, a synchondrosis could be simply where the epiphysis meets the diathesis, and there's a pad of hyaline cartilage in there called the epiphyseal plate, and that is an example of a synchondrosis. Another example of a synchondrosis is where the ribs anchor onto the sternum. So to summarize with the synchondrosis, the two bones are um, joined by hyaline cartilage. Let's take a look at another category of cartilaginous joints called a symphysis. In a symphysis, the bones are united by a pad of fibrocartilage. And so the intervertebral disc, like they're showing us here in between two vertebrae, represent a symphysis. And another example of a symphysis is the pubic symphysis. This is where the pad of fibrocartilage uh, unites the right and left pubic bones. And so a third type of uh, joint is called a synovial joint. And this is where the two bones meet. There's actually a fluid filled cavity. So to summarize, as far as structural classification goes, there are three different types of joints, fibrous joints, cartilaginous joints, and synovial joints. So now that we've looked at the uh, three different categories of joints based on structure, let's talk a little bit about uh, how joints are classified based on the movement that's possible. There are three categories of joints based on the amount of movement possible. Uh, one type is called synarthrotic. That would be when the bones are immovable, there's no movement compared to amphiarthrotic, that would be a slight amount of movement is possible compared to diarthrotic, that's a freely movable joint. So let's try to put this information all together, the structural classification together with the functional classification or how much movement is possible. With the fibrous joints, they're either going to be immovable or slightly movable. Uh, the suture and the gomphosis, the tooth and the socket, those are synarthrotic, immovable. Depending on the length of the fibers for the ligament, you might see slight movement, that's amphiarthrotic. And the same thing with cartilaginous joints. Cartilaginous joints are basically immovable to slightly uh, movable. A synchondrosis, where two bones are united by hyaline cartilage, those are considered synarthrotic. Compared to the a symphysis, like the intervertebral discs, um, that would be considered amphiarthrotic, slightly movable. Now, because synovial joints all have a fluid-filled cavity that joins the two bones, all of those are going to be freely movable diarthrotic joints. One last observation, and we'll wrap this up. The fibrous and the cartilaginous joints are either immovable or slightly movable, and when we look at where those are located in the skeleton, we know that the fibrous joints, like the suture, is located in the skull, uh, the gomphosis, tooth and socket, 
the synchondrosis, you know, rib to sternum symphysis, the intervertebral discs or the pubic symphysis. And the point I'm trying to make here is that fibrous and cartilaginous joints are primarily located in the axial skeleton. They're either immovable or slightly movable, and these joints are very, very stable compared to diarthrotic joints. Synovial joints are the ones that are found in the limbs. They're all freely movable, and because they are so movable, they're less stable, or another way to think about this is they're more susceptible to injury. And so synovial joints are really concentrated in the appendicular skeleton.